comes from uh, a Gandhi quote that says, uh, we must not lose faith in humanity. Humanity is like an ocean. And just because a few drops are dirty doesn't mean it pollutes the entire ocean. So, that's where that comes from. I wanted to, uh, especially with, with that album, uh, since it was kind of our just first real attempt to uh, to make something that you know wasn't just uh, like musically heavy, but also uh, you know emotionally uh, charged and, and heavy. Um, so no one no one had heard anything of our music, and uh, so the best way. I felt was to just write lyrics that were extremely honest um, with myself and where I was in my life at that time. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's why it's come off the way it has because I've made it personal to myself and, and tried to be tried to be honest so other people can relate to it. But, I would hope so, um, and that's what it's it's proven to, to be. Um, that you know, we're we're blessed with a, a fan base that um, has attached to it in some way like that, um, to where they can see a lot of themselves in what's being said or played, um, and that it, it, it's left open enough to where they could kind of like, uh, you know, put in their experience in life and be able to apply it. Uh, and I think that's that's one thing that, you know, none of us could have done. That's all the stuff that happens like in the fans and that, that's like one of our biggest blessings is, is knowing that there are people out there who, who really have attached to it and that it is therapeutic for them just as it was for us to write it. Um, I know that like, when I'm writing lyrics, that's my escape to, to kind of condense and, and really um, get down to what I'm feeling and actually thinking. Um, so to see that, you know, it can be therapy for other people, that's just a blessing, you know. Because it's something you can't force. You know. uh, it'll be similar, not the same. Um, there are definitely uh, musical bits in it that are really reminiscent of, of Dear God in that kind of uh, style. Um, but I think that as, as a group, we do a fantastic job at um, maturing with it and, and progressing the music. Um, with our new addition of Mike, uh, our new guitarist and singer, um, you know, we wanted to kind of collaborate with him and uh, give him a place in the band. And he has a fantastic singing voice, so there's gonna be a little more of that on the new album, um, and we're all really, really proud of it. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's different because I think we did things on this new album just trying to be creative and, and really be free in, um, in how we wrote the, mu the music and, and performed it, and uh, that we just couldn't do the first album with all of the, uh, the resources that we were given. Um, the first album was extremely uh, DIY, like done in a one bedroom apartment, like studio and in closets, you know? And then the second album is obviously done in, in a, a real studio with a budget and all this different stuff, so, and a fantastic producer. So that all kind of played into it. 
And uh, so we, we came out with something that, you know, holds the same kind of essence or, or like spirit, but is, is different in, in a couple ways. So hopefully it's a good balance. Mm -hmm. We think it is. And uh, yeah, his, his old band, Elijah, he, he had done great work uh, with them. And yeah, just seeing that performed live uh, every night when we toured with them, we knew that bringing him into the band, uh, we, were, we were getting a real asset, you know, um, something that we didn't have before. So, you know, very, very much looking forward to people's reactions to like, his singing. So. Um, yeah, we, we kind of kept on with a, a theme of, you know, um, being real with what we feel. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, sadness is, is a part of life and uh, it brings out things. And like, people have always said that, you know, the best art comes from either, like, sadness or love, right? So. I hope that, you know, that'll shine through in the next album too, uh, because even though it does have its, its dark moments, um, and I do talk about some like, pretty, pretty real things, um, not, not just, uh, you know, things that go on internally, um, but things in the world around us that are like currently happening that are pretty, pretty sad and bleak in, in and of themselves. Um, so, yeah, keeping with, like, the themes of, of, of sadness, of, of despair or depression, um, as is life, we have to, like, look at the other side, too, and we always hope that there is that, that, you know, gleam of, of hope or joy and, and love, grace, all these different things that are extremely positive and, and evident in our lives uh, to, to kind of like bring those all together and and make something um, that kind of brings you up and brings you down uh, that was our, our main goal for for the themes of, of this album um, I think we did pretty well, uh, a pretty good job of carrying over the same kind of themes as the first album so not not the same album but kind of building off of it. You know? uh, it definitely can be. I know that when I'm when I'm down, depressed, frustrated, I have a lot of things just like swirling around in my head that I, I want I want to say and want to express and just oftentimes in your day to day you just don't know how. So, like, like you said before, um, this music, for, for myself especially, is extremely therapeutic because I, I get to, you know, kind of like corral all that in and, you know, try and get to the root of what I'm actually feeling and then writing something. Uh, so I think, yeah, it is, it is true. Uh, I know that oftentimes when things are going extremely well in my life, it kind of just coasts through, you know, uh, go through my day to day and, and, and just, you know, things are real easy because you're happy, you know, you're up. But uh, it's always, you know, when you're alone um, and things don't seem so bright, when all that like stuff comes in, you start really thinking. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very important to to be creative. You have to kind of understand and know the waves of your life and your emotion, and at which point to write because you'll be the most inspired. Um, yeah, it's really hard for me. I oftentimes get writer's block when I'm happy. So maybe that's maybe that's why I write about the things we do. But yeah. Emotion helps creativity, that's for sure. <laughs> Stimulates it. Huh. 
<laughs> High stakes Uno has been really fun. Uh, do you know the game Uno? Yeah. Yeah, we, we play it in the bus when we're driving. And it's usually late at night when we have uh, <laughs> a few drinks in us. But uh, yeah, we'll just sit around uh, the two tables in the bus and uh, play Uno for funny or, or uh, high stakes. So tonight, there's actually, we played last night and Nick, uh, the drummer of Polar, lost both times. <laughs> And uh, so he's gonna have to, to do some like uh, some stuff tonight, like to make up for the bet. But um, yeah, I won't give that away yet. But uh, like one of the stakes was having to sit in the like the bathroom of the bus, which is very very small, um, <laughs> for an hour, just because it would be funny. So yeah, that. Without getting too explicit, that that is an anecdote. That is that's kind of funny. That's kind of like bonded all of the bands, just playing games together and just having fun. Yeah, and especially with with these three bands, uh, we've toured with Counterparts and Hundreds before, and uh, like picking Counterparts up from from the airport, like. We all got up out of our bunks and like ran outside and gave them big hugs and stuff like that. So, like we are all like pretty good friends to begin with, and then Polar was new to us, but you know they're really good uh, people. So you know just hanging out with them, getting to know them, they fell right in. So yeah, this tour has been like a huge family. Like I almost feel like waking up at camp every day. You know what I mean? Or like getting on the bus to go to camp, but it, it's all with your best friends. So, yeah, it's, it's really sad to see this tour ending, but yeah, a lot of bonding is going on. <laughs> so. It's probably, I know we each have our own favorite songs to play live, but uh, the hardest part is always awesome to play live every night. Uh, and then uh, This Loneliness, uh, This Loneliness Won't Be the Death of Me is like, a really big one too. Uh, people seem to have attached to both of them because both of them are really emotional and deal with some heavy stuff. So yeah, to, to see people in countries that you know English is not their first language, like singing those words is always always very very surreal to me. But uh, yeah, I, lo I love playing those those two live. They probably the same thing. I am. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm the most clumsy person. I, I spill things daily. Uh, it's pretty much a regular occurrence. It hasn't happened these past couple days, so I'm probably uh, jinxing myself right now. But um, yeah, I'm back home. It's like, it's such a regular occurrence that all my friends just forgive me for it now. Because, yeah, like I'll just turn up at their house to like hang out or something, like get handed a tea or something like that to drink and then spill it, like right away. You know, like not even five minutes in the door and I'm, like I've already spilled something. But uh, yeah, ever since I was younger, I've always been a little clumsy. Mm -hmm. But it helps me not take myself so seriously. So I like that. Anything that keeps me grounded. funniest? Yeah. Uh, probably Connor, our drummer. Uh, he, yeah, he's, he's really, really quick-witted and funny. And Michael, <coughs> Michael's hilarious too. And like, I think what makes Michael so funny is uh, he doesn't have like a ridiculous sense of humor. Like Connor, Connor can get kind of ridiculous and it, it's still hilarious. But in his own way, Michael is, is most of the time pretty even keel and like deadpan. Not over serious, but not always joking. And then he has this kind of like dry English wit about him where he'll like drop something really quick that kind of like take you off guard. 
and you'll realize, oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> and he'll start laughing, and he'll be like, he'll show you a knowing look. And yeah, he's, he's quietly funny, whereas Connor is just a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know my, myself personally, I have to like, shake myself out of laziness sometimes, but, yeah, probably, probably me and Connor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I honestly don't know. I haven't lived with, uh, either of the new guys. In, in for like an extended period of time for too long um, other than being in a, a bus where you have like your own bunk and you got your suitcase and stuff like that so I don't know what their bunks look like like maybe their bunks are dirty but yeah Tyler and Ralph are extremely clean and, and hygienic and I'm I'm like right in the middle I'm, I'm more leaning towards hygiene and and cleanliness, but uh, yeah, I know I can get a little, a little messy. Never with food or anything like that, though. It's always like clothes. Yeah, but no, not really messy people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyler would probably end up taking that uh, because. He's extremely, extremely smart, extremely business savvy, um, and he he kind of has like his his finger on the pulse of every aspect of the band. Um, so yeah, a lot of the times so he'll he'll be the one like telling us what we're doing and, and uh, like what time we got to be at the airport or like uh, you know just kind of saying, hey, remember that we got this. Like, all right, thank you for the reminder and all this stuff. So, yeah, Tyler, Tyler does a really good job of making sure we're all doing what we're supposed to do and getting to where we need to be, so. Uh, oh, the cool thing is um, for our new album, pick up the vinyl because there's music on the vinyl that won't be on the CD or on iTunes or anything like that. You'll have to actually have the, the physical vinyl to hear like, this little bit of music that we've added in. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Thanks. No worries.